If you've ever watched any of my other videos, you will see that I'm typically focused on music programs in schools, but today I wanted to veer off into something that is also close to my heart. Before I got a job as a road rep, I actually worked at a concert venue. I never wanted to work in a concert venue. It just kind of developed that there was a job opening, I needed a job, and I got in there. One of my main specialties was talking about concert cost and figuring out how much we would make in a concert, estimating from bands that we were looking at how much would it cost. And I developed this spreadsheet, and about six years ago, I made a video, put it up online, and it never really blew up. It's not like it got a bunch of views, but I consistently get people messaging me about this throughout the years. Some just want a copy of the sheet so they can use it. Others said that they had a professor in mu their music industry class in college who showed it to them. So I wanted to redo it because I go back and watch that video and think, oh, I could really have done this better. Also, Excel, you have to pay a subscription to use it. A lot of people don't have access to that. So I redid my sheet on Google Sheets and I've actually improved it quite a bit now that I've been away from it for a while. So I'm really excited to show you what I have. Before you can start factoring in all the ticket sales, all the beer sales, all the things that you wanna make money with, you have to start off with what are your expenses? What is the capacity of your room? That's how many tickets you can actually sell and how many people you can get into the venue. The second is what is your estimated bar? The estimated bar would be different depending on geographically where you're at. If you're in Chicago, it's gonna be a lot higher because drink prices are way higher and people are gonna be spending more money. The venue I was at was in Peoria, Illinois, so the bar is probably about a third of what it would be in Chicago because people just aren't gonna pay that much. Next, you have to figure out your business expenses. And these are the things that are locked in month to month. My boss absolutely hated that I factored this in because honestly, it makes your concert revenue look bad. You're not making as much as you think you're making, but it's really important to do because if you're not being honest with yourself, what are you doing? You should be as specific as you can with this because there are times where you'll do deals with promoters that you need to tell them, okay, this is our expenses. Once we have made enough money to meet those expenses, then we'll start splitting the bar or the ticket sales or whatever it may be. The first would be to factor in what is your staff salaries. These are not the people working the actual event. These are the people who work at the venue every single day. What is the set amount you're paying these people per month? So we had one of the owners, we had a manager and me as the assistant. I'm gonna put that in about $3,200 per month. Then I also wanna factor in all your regular bills. So your electricity, your sewage, your water, internet. We had a big gigantic industrial printer that we rented month to month. So that's factored in there. We actually rented out our sound system. We did a leasing program through a company. There's a website called Polestar. That is a website you use to track what bands are doing, how well their ticket sales are going. That way you can get a better idea to estimate what are you gonna make when you have this band at your venue. Also factoring in property tax. Typically at a venue, you're gonna have to pay for ASCAP BMI fees. Now there's a website called Soundtrack that seems to do this whole, you can go through them. We didn't actually use that at the venue I was at, but I thought, let's try that. So it's a monthly fee of 175 bucks. So right now what I have down is $5,305 per month that you are paying. If you're not having any concerts or events, you're still spending this money no matter what because that's what you're paying. Let's say we're having 10 in a month. That means every concert that we're hosting that month costs us $530.50 per concert. That's just our business expenses. That's not talking about bartenders or laborers or anything. But that's important because that $530 is a lot of money. If you want to factor in, well, it's just one day out of the week, you can do that too. So let's say if there's 31 days in the month, then it's $171.13 per day. So if you're not having events, you're losing money, man. You got to have events. You got to start making money. It helps keep your mind in check of what cost do we really have. And if people ignore this, I'm telling you, that's why so many venues go down. Make sure you have all those as close to perfect as you possibly can. So booking bands is an art form all in itself. It's really challenging. A lot of bigger acts have agencies they work with, and those agencies sometimes don't want to work with a brand new venue. You can call them and they'll just ignore you. They have their places already set out. Knowing how much to pay a band is also really challenging because everything in the music industry is a negotiation. So if I were to tell you I got this band for this amount of money and that was lower than another venue paid them, then that means 
everybody would say, well, we're not paying you that amount because you went, you did it for this amount for this other person. The information you do have is what they're asking you for. So they'll have a set amount on certain websites that will say, this band will ask for this amount of money. Now you can offer a lower amount and the band may just say no, the band may never call you back. I have seen some people who offer more because they want this band so bad and they know they're going to do well in their area. So it's really difficult to give you an exact number of how much you pay per band because every band is different and everybody's going to ask for a different amount of money. I've also seen bands that really don't have a lot of clout anymore. They haven't really done anything in a long time, but they've been around so long that they don't really feel like it's worth going out for a certain amount of money. So they ask for something that's probably way more than they could ever bring in for you, but they don't really want to come to you. <laughs> so it's really challenging. How do I even get started then? Well, you can start looking at bands who are touring, look at their tour dates and see if they have any passing dates. That means that they're playing in one city, they have a day in between, and they're playing in another city, and right in between, you're right in the middle of those two places, and it wouldn't be that much for them to just stop at your place, get a nice hotel room maybe, make a little extra money instead of spending a whole night not making anything. If you can start building up a reputation through those bands, You'll start getting a little bit of clout with some of those agencies. You'll start hearing some of those people start saying, oh, I've heard of you guys, a bunch of these groups played there, and they did well or they liked it there. There was a promoter that was trying to put on this big country festival. He had done two of them in the years before, and when we talked to him, he was trying to get us involved in it to help him out financially. He was getting these pretty big names in the country world, pretty current names, and he was paying them about four times the amount they were actually should have been getting paid. There were people who you would initially pay $30,000 to come to a concert, and he was paying them upwards of $100,000. So he would have these huge events. He would get all these people paying, you know, $300 for the weekend. He would have to have an army of security people. He'd have to have an army of bartenders. He'd have to have all these different people working the event, and he never thought about how much the labor cost is. There are a ton of jobs that go into putting on an event, not just bartenders and security. You have bar backs, you have runners, you have all these different people. We're going to go into real quick what each one of these jobs are, and then you can have a better idea of what it's like putting on a massive concert. Concerts are all about selling beer. That's why the bartenders are one of the most important parts of your event. I have in my sheet here a bunch of different types of bartenders, as in the amount of hours they work. The bartenders who clean up, the ones who are just there for the show, the ones who are going to leave a little early when it dies down. Barbacks are not serving alcohol. They are the ones who are actually cleaning up. So when a trash can gets full, you need someone there to clear out the trash can so that the bartenders can continue to sell beer. If you have to have two or three bartenders go clean up, take out the trash in the middle of a concert, you're wasting money. You're not making money. you got to serve people as fast as you possibly can. The box office are people selling tickets during the event. Most events, like festivals, are going to have tickets bought ahead of time, but probably a good 40 to 50% of the revenue, at least at the venue I was at, were being sold on the day of. Some venues have a coat check. Not all do, but some would and you would have to have someone taking coats. A green room assistant would be just anybody backstage, not a security guard, but just someone there for any needs that the band or the crew needs. ID check is a really important job depending on how you want to run your venue. Ours would have you check their ID right when they came in, put a wristband on them. And that way the bartenders could just look at the wristband. They wouldn't have to ask them for their ID. Now, if it's a small event, you may have the bartenders just say, hey, let me see your ID real quick. And then the rest of the night, they know that person is of age and it's all good. But if the event's going to be a lot of people, you don't want to slow down the bartenders by having them have to check IDs constantly. Your load in crew and your load out crew are going to be extra people coming in to help the band load in and out. Merchandise is kind of a weird one. The place I was at did have merchandise, so they would sell t-shirts with the concert venue on it. Not a lot of places do that, I think. Parking attendants, this depends on whether or not your venue has a large parking lot or not. Most places are going to have somebody out there just to make sure no one's cars are getting messed with. 
We had a horrible situation. We had to have parking lots across the street. Other businesses allowed us to use their parking lots during events. So we had to have a ton of parking attendants just around making sure people are going to the right places. Hiring a photographer is a really good idea because you want really good photos that you can constantly use for your social media and post all the time. Our photographer would just get a flat rate every night and they would take all the photos, go home, edit them, and send them to us the next day, and that was it. Runners are there to shuttle the crew wherever they need to go, whether that's the hotel or a restaurant, or any situation that they possibly could want. I had a drummer who wanted to go watch the drum solo contest at Guitar Center in town, so we went there for a few hours. I also had to drive a band's bus driver to a parts store because their bus needed repairs. You do need to have a good staff of security people, or else, you're gonna have a rough time if a fight breaks out and you can't control the crowd. You also have to be very careful with security people because a lot of the security people I met were really gung-ho about beating the living hell out of somebody as soon as they got drunk. There were a few times where we had to actually tell the security guards to back off because they were going a little too heavy on people, being a little inappropriate around women. Don't get locked in with one right away because that's what happened to us as we locked into one group. We had this kind of agreement with them and then they turned out to do a lot of things that we were unhappy with. Lighting and sound, you're going to have usually just flat rates for those types of people unless you have somebody who's hired specifically for your venue, a full day or a half day rate. We did have a few events where we had spotlight operators and so you pay them as well. Stage hands are people who are just there by the stage that if something happens, let's say a water bottle falls over, something gets knocked on the stage and there's someone running up to take care of it so that it's not in the way. And of course you're gonna need ticket scanners when people come in to make sure you know how many people actually came into the event, which really helps you estimate your cost for future events when you know exactly how many people came. Now every venue is a little different, every place is different, so there might be other jobs that you need to add in. At the top of the spreadsheet, when you put in when the band's going to get there, when the event starts, doors open, when the band's supposed to be done, I have everything factored into what each one of these jobs, an estimate of how many hours they're actually going to work. And then you just have to go in and put how many workers you want on each job. And that's why I have specific different bartenders and bar back positions. Most events, you're not going to have the bartenders all be there from open to close. It's going to die down a little bit crowd's not going to be as crazy during the main act. If you've played in local venues, you're probably pretty used to the idea of splitting the door as in all the tickets go 50-50 between the venue and the band. That's pretty common in like a bar, so that's still a possibility in any venue. If it's a large act, they're going to want a guarantee. They're not going to come to a venue and hope to make money. They want to have a set amount. This is what we're going to make for the night. Sometimes you may have an MC. We had some radio personalities who would come and do stuff. And then of course we had opening bands. There is a big concept in the world that everybody's getting paid. Everybody should get paid because they're talented musicians. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. A friend of mine really wanted to get booked for this huge band that had been coming to our venue several times they sold out every time they came there they were a very similar style band he said that his band charged two thousand dollars the other thing is he also said that they weren't going to audition because you know you know who are who's in this band we're incredible musicians and you know this guy has a degree in this and this guy is a professor here and blah 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 the arrogance of that statement is incredible the show is sold out we don't care about you because the show sold out. If you want to play for a packed crowd, audition, do what you need to do to get booked. But if you think, take a huge chunk of money out of that profit and just give it to us because we want to play. And this usually comes from college people. Everybody should get paid. And if you're not getting paid, it's not right. I know the meme about chefs coming and cooking for free. Oh, but it's great exposure. I know what you're trying to say, but I also know there was another act that played the exact same type of music, the same sort of setup. They came up and played and they had a great time. They made a lot of fans and they really profited off of it. A lot of touring bands will actually make you pay for backline. There's been some pretty shady deals that have happened where a band is touring, they have all their equipment, and then they go, oh, no, 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 this is backline. So some guy apparently is providing them backline, and we had to pay that person 2000 bucks. can be sketchy sometimes. You have to be prepared that sometimes you have to provide 
musical equipment for them. A drum set is something that's pretty common. Special amps, specific microphones. Catering, of course, is the food you're giving to the band. A lot of bands will have a very specific list of here's everything we want. You can negotiate those things and just say, hey, listen, we're not going to buy all this stuff on your list. We're just going to give you $300 for food. Or they just call and say, hey, we can't do this stuff on your list, but we'll buy a buffet catering dinner for you guys. A lot of the small acts we would get in who were headlining but were up and coming, we'd really make an effort to get them everything on their list because they never ever had someone do that for them. They were really, really excited and they wanted to come back to our venue. And that's really the name of the game with hospitality and the true secret of putting on events is finding these up and coming acts, treating them better than they have ever been treated before. And that comes down to the hospitality. If you can give them everything and more, they are going to love you. They're going to want to be loyal to you. They're going to want to come back. Even when they're maybe a little too big for your venue, they're going to want to come back and support you. I have to say the venue I was at did such an amazing job with this because we had showers. The bands are living in vans most of the time and they don't get to shower that often. We had a washer and dryer so they got to clean all their clothes, which I can't tell you the amount of times I saw roadies and bandmates jumping up and down in excitement because they saw a washer and dryer. And we do other things like have couches in the back. We had a pool table. We tried to have lots of things to entertain them because they spend their time on the road. They're kind of bored. They basically sit around all day waiting to perform. And then when they perform, you know, they're just tired. And so a lot of those bands would come in, take a shower, wash all their clothes, go play pool for a while, have a great time around the venue, get a drink here and there, go do their concert, come out, take a shower again, wash the clothes that they just sweated through, take all the Gatorade or whatever that they had, and then go and get back on the road. And I tell you what, what a reputation you build when you do that type of stuff for people. Depending on the event, you're going to have to advertise it, whether that's printing up stuff in the newspaper. I know that's getting old, doing radio ads, doing social media. You have to determine those things ahead of time. How much are you going to spend on each individual thing? I even factor ticket printing. I know that my boss hated that I did that, but hey, every penny counts. Every penny counts. So now we're going to get into the fun part. I'm going to give you two scenarios. I'm going to give you the big headliner, and then we're going to do a smaller act that maybe you're not really that excited about, maybe like a tribute band. We're going to look at the two and compare and see the difference and see why so many people get into the concert world and fail so miserably because they just don't look at the facts so here we go let's jump in so we're going to start out with a classic rock band setting a group that maybe has plateaued over the years in their fame still got some loyal fans out there who are going to come out to see them i have the arrival time doors open start time end time all in there this is going to be a venue promoted concert i have different uh Choi different choices as far as what type of a event we're doing. We're going to do the venue. So this means that the actual location are the ones paying for the band to be there. And I'm going to give the band 10% of the bar. A lot of times you'll do something like that so that the band can hopefully feel as though, hey, we're actually selling some beer here. We should get more money because they're making money. Now, I already have all my expenses. So I'm going to put 20000 for the headliner as a guarantee. Not going to pay any opening acts because they're a well-known band. Paying $2,000 for their backline catering, hospitality, all of that, social media, all the advertising. So that comes out to $23,700. It's definitely kind of scary to look at concerts in this way because that is how much money we're dealing with. $331 I put that we had 16 concerts that month. That's our business expenses. And then we're going to go down to give them eight hotel rooms and then a van for shuttling them around if we need to. Here is all the jobs we're going to need. Inflation's gone up a little bit. So we have six who are going to do clean up early out, two for the show only, and then we're going to do two early out. That's 10 bartenders. Probably could go with a lot more than that, to be honest. Three barbacks, and I'm just going to have them do setup and cleanup. Do two people in the box office. We're not going to do coat check. I'll do one uh, green room assistant. We're going to have four ID check people, which you want people getting in there as quickly as possible so they can start buying beer. Loading crew. Four guys. We'll do four people loading out. We'll do 
one person doing merchandising. We'll do six people doing parking attendance. A photographer. We're going to have one runner. Security for the show. If it's this big of a show, I'm going to say we're probably going to need at least like two guys during the day and then 12. We're going to do one sound and lighting guy all day. We're going to do one uh, half day. A lot of times the sound guys would come up, get everything set up, and then they'd have like an assistant who would come help with monitors and do other stuff. We're going to have two spotlight operators, uh, two stage hands, ticket scanners. That brings our grand total there to $3,904, which brings us in the hole $28,000. $436.50. We're almost to $30,000 in debt at this point. And now we have to talk about how are we going to sell tickets. A lot of times you have ticket prices in advance so people can save a couple bucks. And then if they do it the day of, they have to pay like an extra $2 or whatever. But this is like a all standing. So let's do $35. We're going to do $39. We're not going to do any seating. The venue has a total of uh, 15 that 1500 people i'm gonna put 1400 here let's say we sold in advanced 500 tickets and then the night of we sold another let's say 120 tickets this is just an accurate representation of an event that we had part of this right here is the estimated bar so we're estimating if it's ten dollars per person that we are making five thousand off of the people who did advanced tickets and 1200 off of the people who are there day of. Now, comp tickets are free tickets you give out to people. Usually about half of the people show up, so that's another $500 in bar for that. Now, as you can see, we're still not making a profit. If you only have events like this, you're going to lose a lot of money. Of course, if we sold out, we'd make a ton of money. This is a real event that actually happened at our venue, and this was one that my boss got really, really pissed about, and he didn't like and said that we lost all this money, and it was a waste of time, and it was so dumb, and why did we have this group here? I want to look at the actual facts behind it, because we had a group from St. Louis. They just wanted to get up, and they wanted to expand and try to get into new locations, so they came up and played for half of the door. They came in about 3 p.m., got set up. They did all their own setup. I'm going to show you we still have the same business expense, $331, as far as... All the other expenses, we didn't have a guarantee for the band. We didn't pay any openers or anything. We had a couple bands that came and wanted to play, um, but they didn't get paid. So we gave about $100 in hospitality. We did advertise it just a little bit, but we only spent about $200. Our flat rate expenses was a little over $300. Uh, we didn't do a hotel. We didn't do any transportation. So our further expenses there are completely zero. So we look at our labor expenses. We only had two bartenders for the night. The box office, we just had one person. ID check. Oh, ID check. We only had one person. Actually, oh, blah, blah, blah. we had nobody for ID check that night because we just had the bartenders look at people's IDs instead because there weren't a ton of people. We had one parking attendant just making sure people knew where to go. We did hire a photographer that night. We had two security guards for the show. Honestly, we really didn't need one. Sound person who only worked half a day. They didn't have that much setup to do. And then one ticket scanner. Actually, you know, we just had the person in the box office scan the tickets. Our labor cost was only a little over $700. So our expenses were a little over $1,000 for, for that. That's including all our business expenses. Even with splitting the door, we got 100% of the bar profit here. We got 100% of that which was $850. The ticket sales that came in were about $1,500. Half of that went to the band, so the band made $785. We made $347. Now, of course, you think that's nothing. That is not a lot of money. But we are making enough to cover the expenses of for a day, a little over a day. If we go to, let's see, if we do like 31 you know, we're spending... $171 per day every day. So if we can come in and make a profit on a day and maybe get people to come in and see the venue who have never been here before. Oh, and I'll put in that we only had about 85. There was only 85 people who showed up. So it was a small event. But with that being a small event, we had a lot less expenses. And the sad thing is that we made a big, we made a profit and my boss was livid and was so mad because he was pissed that we were doing this tribute band and he didn't want them there. 
but yet we made money off of this band. We didn't make money off of this classic rock band. So you may think, well, does that mean I only can have small bands or tribute bands or whatever? Not exactly. You may be asking, well, why was the attendance so poor on that classic rock band? That's the problem. Well, partly because it was a pretty new venue and honestly, most people didn't even know we existed. Unless people followed that specific band who had kind of plateaued over the years, they didn't know they were even coming to town. But the truth is you need some big names because that's what gets people's attention. You put it on the radio, it'll people will perk up. When you say a bunch of tribute bands no one's ever heard of, you're not going to get a ton of people coming in all the time. But you can't only have that because you're going to lose money constantly at the beginning. So for every big concert you have, you have got to have several smaller events that actually are bringing in the cash. Some of the biggest mistakes that my boss would do would turn away guaranteed money. We had people who wanted to rent out our venue for weddings, and he wouldn't let them because he didn't want to be stuck. What if this really great band all of a sudden wants to come in and we can't do it because we have a wedding that day? That wedding is guaranteed money. They were going to just pay us like $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. Know, our expenses would have been nothing. We would have brought in a profit. But he said no to those things because he didn't want people to think we were just a wedding venue. He was also really invested in doing an open stage night, which never brought in any money. We didn't serve food there, so people weren't going to just come there to hang out. And he thought, oh, we'll just get people coming in, but who, who wants to just go on a Wednesday night and drink at a place without any food and just watch a bunch of people do an open stage? It, it never brought in a profit. It wasn't even close. And then he would start trying to do things like, well, we'll have food there. We'll have free food there. And so we're spending more money for nothing. And most of the time, the food just got thrown away because no one showed up. If you want to put on events and you have a big venue, you got to find little ways to supplement profit. We did rent out the space to a church on Sunday mornings. That was a great way to make some extra money. A dance studio at one point was renting the space. In the backstage area, you could set up like a mini stage with instruments and everything, and you could let people rent out that space for rehearsals for their bands. Events where you have vendors, a Saturday morning when you don't have any other events. Also be creative. You could do like a drum festival or a guitar festival. You could bring in clinicians and you could build a community around music music and actually get more people coming around to your venue. The main mistake that the people I worked with made was that they would bring in an artist and if that artist didn't make them a profit right from the start, they just said, screw it, that guy, they're a lost cause, we're never having them back here again. But you have to grow an act, even an act that has a name. People in the area maybe don't come to it and you have to bring them in and then everybody says oh my gosh you missed this band you gotta see them they were so good people say oh aren't they old no man they they rocked you gotta come out and see it and then more people come the next time and then more people the next time now if they come and they suck and they're terrible of course don't have them back but if they're really good the next time you have them they'll bring in a little more and a little more the booking agent i got to sit with for a long time he brought in bb king to the venue he was at and he brought him three times the second and third time, he sold the place out and made a huge profit. The first time, uh, they made just barely enough to make a profit, but not enough to really you know, live off of. But he understood that every time you bring them back, you're going to get more people and you're going to make a profit finally. Help your regional groups, people local to you who are starting to get somewhere. Have them open up for big acts. Give them a night to themselves. Help them grow because if they're growing, they're bringing in a bigger audience then you are growing and you're going to bring in an audience. The amount of venues I've seen who are so rude to the local musicians around them is incredible. They just, they treat everybody like dirt and it sucks because you could help build up a band who really does have talent. You could have a blues night and bring in three or four local blues bands, build up that night and have a really good time four or five times you'll probably start getting a good following of people who just think it's a great night out. And lastly, you got to find up and coming groups. You need to go listen, find YouTube videos of people who are just getting out there and treat them really, really well. Because when you treat these up and coming groups really well that you think are going to go somewhere, they are going to want to help you because if you help them, the booking agent I got to work with had worked with tons and tons of acts throughout the years. He didn't like talking about 
all the groups he's worked with. He was a really modest, humble guy. But the one story he did tell me is that he had a group come in. They were supposed to be this hot, young act that was supposed to be doing really well. They came into Peoria. They sold about 40 tickets. He was in the hole like several thousand dollars from this event. And they just didn't bring in what they thought they were going to bring in. He really liked this group. He thought they were really talented. He thought they were going to go somewhere. Their van was broken down. Not only did he pay them the full amount they agreed upon, but he actually gave them $700 in cash and said, Listen, I know tonight was rough. You guys are incredible. Get your van worked on. I want to see you guys again. That band, the next year, had several hits on the radio. They came back to his venue sold the place out, and he made a huge profit. And that band was Collective Soul. This was the type of thing he did all the time for people. His name was Denny DeBourbon, and he was a really good friend of mine, and unfortunately he's no longer with us. I had the pleasure of sitting with Denny for about six months. I know that seems really short and probably insignificant to a lot of people, but the impact he had on me in six months was huge. I became a better writer. I became a better person. Um, I was the type of person that didn't have a lot of people who seemed to believe in me, and Denny was someone who uplifts people. I can remember a specific day that my boss, as you can probably tell throughout this video, I didn't have a very great boss. <laughs> Honestly, pretty mentally abusive most of the time, and he came in and just started yelling at me, blaming me for a bunch of things that weren't really my fault, but he just liked to push blame off on other people. And when he left the room, Denny looked at me and he said, don't listen to a damn word he said to you. You have more talent in your finger than that guy has ever had in his whole life. And you're going to do something with it. And he never did. The conviction he said that with, I, I've never had anybody believe in me that way. And he, I know that that wasn't, I'm not a I know that I am not the only person that he treated that way. I know that he treated every person like that way. He treated every band he worked with that way. And that is why he is who he is and how he did so many great things for so many bands. Um, truly one of the greatest people I've ever known in my life. And um, I love you, Denny. And I want to say this is for him. And you have to love music, want to see people succeed. If you're in it just for yourself, and there's so many people in this business who are strictly to make money, you will not be successful and you will not be happy at the end of the day. Man, is it a huge subject. Wanted to just make a video that was as honest and transparent as possible. Have a good one.